All right, everyone. Hello and welcome. So again, there are even more changes. There is a lot going on in Warframe. Many things are changing and these things are happening tomorrow. A lot of them are anyway. Not everything we're going to talk about today is happening tomorrow, but a lot of it is. Specifically, these Warframe changes we're going to cover first. So let's get into those. A lot of these are addendums or furthers on the changes that we already talked about in the previous videos this week. And first and foremost, I feel like I'm being watched. So this ash change is that your Bladestorm marks cost less. So for those that are not aware, I did a stream kind of going over in theory crafting uh, a lot of builds and stuff that are going to be good when these changes and reworks hit for these Warframes. And the one specific remark that I made was that Bladestorm marks seem like they maybe cost too much because their base value with no efficiency is 15 energy when you're not invisible. And I was like, that seems really high. So seeing this be the only thing listed on Ash that is changing is a little fucking scary to me. But I'm really happy to see that. That's awesome. Can't wait for that. I don't know how much it's being reduced by, but if the non-invisible cost is reduced from 15 to 10, then you get the invisibility. Uh discount and then you also get the discount from building for efficiency and stuff that's going to be fucking awesome and ash is going to be like literally perfect couldn't possibly couldn't have a possible complaint in the world really so there's that very awesome then we got to talk about atlas so atlas has received some further kind of larger changes really to how he's actually going to work and the first being that petrify is no longer going to be a channel it is going to be a sort of railgun down hallway, let's say, instantaneous petrification of all enemies. There's a video of this, and I'll put it here. It's pretty fucking cool. It looks really awesome in practice, and is going to be highly effective. Uh, that is, like, given the range that is being shown in that clip, as long as that is not, like, someone building for, like, the 250% range you can build for, that's awesome if that is the standard range of that ability when it's going to be changed holy shit is that going to be really effective for kind like a million things it's going to be super good i cannot wait to try that out um so that's dope then we got some more details on rubble uh rubble instead of what they initially said which was each piece of rubble you get will decay individually it will now have a singular decay that is refreshed when you pick up a new piece of rubble uh, and considering Atlas is going to be able to generate pieces of rubble with his um, his rumblers by terminating them early, uh, that means that Atlas has the capability to continually build up and snowball really, really hard, which is super, super good. But the one thing that we don't know is how long that decay is. And I've written down here that I really would love that to be between one and two minutes. But what I mean for that is... If it's static, if it's a static timer that doesn't change when you build for duration one way or another with Atlas, 60 seconds is absolutely workable, perfect. If you can build for it and increase it with duration, I'd love to see a base of like, let's say 45 seconds. So if you build for a duration, you can bump it up and get it kind of around two minutes. I think that'd be totally reasonable. And either or would be tremendous and make it so that Atlas just snowballs super hard and builds up and gets tons of armor. Uh, it's going to be 75 armor per rubble piece. I do not know how many pieces of rubble enemies shatter into. I would assume it would be something along the lines of one piece of rubble for like a Lancer, let's say, dying while petrified. And maybe two pieces for a heavy unit dying while petrified. I think that would be pretty fair. Uh, and then also maybe your rumblers when they expire, depending on how much HP they have they give you like three pieces or so with like a decent strength build. Either way, all of that stuff provided the base rubble time that you are refreshing up to is significant enough for you to actually be able to upkeep that regularly. Atlas is going to be a snowballing monster. Uh, I do wonder what the armor cap is going to be like on this, and I hope it is like at least 5,000 armor that Atlas can build up to, as that would make him fairly tanky given just a vitality and enough time to build up. Uh, I think the dream is that he kind of caps out at like 10,000 armor, but honestly, at the point where he's capping out at 10,000 armor, 
getting enough armor to significantly raise your durability beyond that level um, would take a very, very long time. So even if it's uncapped, I think it's going to be totally fine. Uh, and he's still going to be really vulnerable to slash procs uh, and things that ignore armor in general and things that just do absolutely ridiculous massive amounts of damage like sentient attacks and things along that line. Uh, and of course, um, nullifiers will almost certainly very quickly drain his rubble, so you're going to have to watch out for those. Basically, I can't fucking wait to play this. I cannot wait to get my hands on this Atlas rework because I think it's going to be absolutely magical. Honestly, if Rubble has a good timer, Atlas might literally become my favorite Warframe because, man, I can't wait for this change. Cannot wait. Can't, I, couldn't, I don't know if you can tell. I couldn't possibly be more excited for this to happen to Atlas. Moving on, though, we have some unfortunate news about Banshee's Augment is being changed even further to instead of you placing it down and it is a regular four from Banshee that you can just be separated from, it is now a one lump pulse like wave of crowd control that's basically a big explosion that knocks everyone down as it spreads outward. I don't know how effective this is going to be, and I would have much, much preferred you to be able to set it down and then get eight seconds or so of like the stumbling crowd control that Banshee is known for with her regular four. So it's significantly worse like this, but I think there's still some potential there. Uh, it, it's a bit unfortunate, but that being said, like Banshee is still going to be a very useful Warframe, and it'll be okay. Things that are definitely going to be okay, Chroma, Chroma, Chroma my boy. His Vex Armor range is going to be base 18 meters, which is very respectable for giving your teammates buffs. Uh, that means even with a little bit of negative range, you're actually going to be within range of teammates you're working closely with, like in defense, uh, or usually survival, sometimes not. Uh, and especially in the case of the Terrorist Hunts, you're usually going to be within that range on people, especially if you're doing it on purpose. So, that's super good. Awesome to see. The much more important change. Chroma's Vex Armor is going to be refreshable, which will keep your buff values. This is the major change Chroma has needed for so, so long because it makes him consistent. And what I mean by that is that, like, say, for example, Rhino, who has a huge amount of consistency and can get a massive amount of bulk and refresh at will by utilizing his Iron Shrapnel Augment, Chroma is going to be a similar level of consistency now because he is going to be able to get his Vex Armor, build it up, and as long as you are doing the upkeep and giving that ability that energy, and it's not channeled, so you can still do a high strength build, you're going to be able to keep those numbers and not have those periods of extreme vulnerability. So that coupled with uh, healing that is reliable, like say the Haruto, uh, or a... Um, the, the secondary that has the, uh, it's on screen, that weapon has an augment that can heal you. I can't remember, the Furious, that's it. This is, the Furious, the Furious has an augment for that. Using that, whatever, using a life strike melee, etc. There's a, like a lot of good ways to heal, uh, the Vacor weapons, all that stuff. Utilizing that will make you a very, very consistent tank that can also dish out a lot of damage. That is awesome. Uh, obviously, I hope to see Chroma's, Chroma have even more change in the future, uh, mostly revolving around his 4, which I feel like is still going to be very lackluster. But on the whole, that doesn't matter. His bread and butter, his Vex armor has been improved. Uh, the refreshability of it is such a gigantic change for him in terms of his consistency and what he can accomplish at higher levels. So, moving on, something that's not as good. Uh, we heard that Ember was going to get some changes to her 1 and her 3, and that is... Well, uh, she can charge up her one to shoot it out, and then it leaves like a little napalm area of damage. Which, um, I'll be honest. Uh, if this doesn't make it so that her one augment can apply to herself, um, then this is com a completely useless change that does nothing. Uh, and I think even beyond that, all of the elemental warframes that have one augments that can buff damage for teammates should be able to self-cast it by casting that ability on the ground in front of them, like Titania can self-cast her one. I really think that is a change that should be applied to all of those augments to make all of those warframes ones significantly more useful for like more higher-end content. Uh, but this change, I don't really see doing anything besides maybe being a bit of fun, kind of like Vaubon's Tesla. 
uh, which is fine, but I don't think it's going to really matter in like the overall effectiveness of Ember at kind of the end point of this change. Uh, along with that, Fire Blast is going to add damage to weapons that fire through it. Obviously, that would be fire damage. I would only assume that would be the case. Um, and that's fine, depending on the amount of damage added. I could see some niche use cases for that. Um, but I still think what Ember really needs, especially if they're going to be nerfing her for to have it reduce its own range and increase in strength as like the time goes on, what Ember really needs is overheat back. She needs to be able to actually survive. If she's going to be less focused on wide-reaching, effective damage for low mid-game, then what needs to happen is she needs to be able to actually survive consistently by getting like a 50% damage reduction or something along those lines from doing her heat up in her four, things like that. That being said... Uh, I think that Ember will get like the work that she needs. Um, I think that's very clear that the feedback from the community is that, hey, em we like Ember a lot. Ember is super popular. We love Ember. Ember still needs to be very good. So I think that that will eventually happen as long as the community continues to push for it. And I certainly, of course, hope that happens as well. And then we have a little, just a little bit of mag changes. Uh, thing that I didn't note here because it's very minor, Crush is going to be a bit faster. Uh, so that's nice. But along with that, the Polarize Augment uh, is now going to, instead of uh, its regular effect, which was restoring and giving overshields and all that business, it will now jam guns uh, for four seconds at base level, which would be modified by duration, one would hope. That makes her a possible choice for some crowd control business, though I don't think it's highly likely she would be used for that. There, there is some potential for a niche build like this to be used, but with a thing we're going to talk about in a bit here, um, I don't think it will actually find a home. Uh, it, it's going to be a neat augment that I think some people will use and it will be effective. Uh, the jam gun stun uh, is actually like a good stun that's very solid as someone that plays Mesa a lot. I really know how to take advantage of the jam gun state. Uh, I think that Mag can make use of this. It's going to really depend on what the build goes for. And if I'm being completely honest, in the super high range build with decent duration that usually accompanies a build focused around Mags 2, I think that this does actually have a place where you might want to use it. Uh, and maybe will be more of the effect you would build for on her 3 rather than the armor stripping and such, which doesn't matter at all on it currently. So that's, that's cool. There, there's some maybe potential there for Mag that I could see. Uh, and then with Zephyr, the main thing that was talked about was that her Tailwind is going to cost less in the air. That's good. It just makes it cheaper for Zephyr to fly around. I think that's very good. There's no downside to that. Uh, and then a more general change uh, is that minions, which includes, say, Anaros's Sand Clones, uh, Necros's, like, Shadows of the Dead, uh, Atlas's Rumblers, so this is also going to be a buff to Atlas because his Rumblers had a real big problem with doing this, uh, will no longer instantly die when entering Nullifier Bubbles. Uh, so, basically, A, those minions will now be able to fuck up Nullifiers because if a Rumbler runs into a Nullifier Bubble and doesn't instantly die, it's going to punch that guy, uh, which is very, very good. Uh, but, additionally... Uh, your rumblers will no longer instantly suicide by going after a nullifier, which was a bad thing uh, that would happen. And now we're going to get into the controversial news, which is that raids are going to be gone. Raids are going to be gone. This is big. As someone who enjoys the raids, um, I read over the post elaborating upon why this is. And I kind of get it. Basically, what I got from the post was that the resources that are being used internally to help maintain the raids and fix bugs and stuff like that are quite a lot. And it is not worth it. Like, it's not worth the time to upkeep the raids so that people can keep playing them. So... What they want to do is take them offline for a while and then bring them back, sort of like redone in a way that is probably more efficient for long-standing content to just be there and not really need to be fixed all the time. I think that is the goal of this announcement. 
obviously a lot of people that are in raiding communities the raid bus which is a very good community that taught a lot a lot of people how to do raids etc um i of course personally on stream taught tons and tons of people how to do the raids and also very much enjoy the raids i can both see the development standpoint of this where this needs to be taken offline because it's taking too much of the developer's time when they could be working on other things and they want to re-implement it in a way where they don't have to constantly be fixing and touching it. And I get that. And I also obviously feel the kind of frustration that is, man, I fucking love raids. Why are you taking away the raids? It's really unfortunate. And I can see both sides. And that's probably like the worst part about this is that I think a lot of players can't see like the development side where it could be a big problem and get in the way of DE doing other things. With that, the Arcanes that are in raids are going to be moved to the new Terra list. So those are the big new two Terra lists that were shown, and a part of their rewards are going to be those Arcanes. And also, and this is the part where I get a little angry, the Riven Transmutation object that is a consumable will also drop from them. So you will do these Terra lists, these new Terra lists, and you will get... An item that allows you, gives you such the privilege of getting rid of four shitty garbage ribbons and making a new shitty garbage ribbon. There is an opportunity here for DE to do something really good and make the ribbon system a lot better. And that is twofold. The first is to just allow transmutation of ribbons for free. If somebody wants to do that, if somebody wants to add another layer of RNG to the already the RNG fest of ribbons and transmute four sortie rewards into one sortie reward that you can only get once per day, then let them. That's fine. Having to work for the privilege of rolling some really shitty dice is not good. That's very bad, especially when this is going to be the big, harder content terror lists that are going to be more difficult than the regular terror list. I think that is kind of insulting. And I have a perfect solution for what would be significantly better. Do the Riven Transmutation for free, and instead, instead, these new, significantly tougher endgame tier, if you would, terror lists, instead drop a locking mechanism for ribbons, which lets you, per one, consume one of these to lock one stat on a ribbon, which would enable you to have a really effective gameplay loop where you make progress in the game and you make progress on a thing that you like. You roll, say, a Vectus ribbon and you get a really good, hey, that's a good amount of damage percentage that I'm getting from that. It's like 150% multi-shot or something. I would love to keep that, but... Also, this has a minus 100% damage bane, so I'm kind of screwed. I can't actually use this mod because it'd be awful. Well, what if you could go farm these big awesome terror lists, do some group activities in the game, and get locking me mechanism that lets you lock in that top stat, and then when you roll the Riven, it would re-roll all of the other stats. That would be an opportunity for the Riven system to move forward and be better and be more player friendly while also giving you a huge gameplay loop that involves them and also includes Arcanes with the Arcanes being moved from raids to the Terrorless, making them awesome and important. I think that would be a much better way to design this and it's insulting to me that we have to fight terrorists for the privilege of getting massive RNG ribbons, even like even more, like, oh, just dissolve four of these, turn into another RNG thing. That's asinine to me, uh, because I think ribbons are a current problem in this game, and like adding a locking system is something that a ton of players want. So yeah, uh, it's, it's really frustrating. Uh, also, I thought it was important to note at the bottom here, with raids being gone, there was a point a long time ago, March 19th, 2015, which is like a little less than three years ago, that the Dark Sector Armistice began. 
And that basically shut down the Dark Sector system. It shut down the clan wars. All of that stuff came to an abrupt halt. And DE said they will return later. The same is currently being said of raids. They're saying we're going to shut these raids down for now. And then they will return later. It has been almost three years. I'd like to reiterate that. That is a long fucking time. It's a long fucking time. And we might be about... We might be about to get uh, the Dark Sectors back due to this, which showed up on one of the dev builds. We might be about to get that back as a, a new thing, but it has been three years. Uh, and I, for one, need some kind of assurance from DE that it's not going to be three years until we see the raids come back, because that shit's just too long. Too many people like raids too much. And while I personally could be like, okay, DE wants to work on some other stuff and go hard, and they need to shut down raids to not have to worry about those, and they're going to improve them and bring them back, say, in, like, December of this year or something. Awesome. That's a timeline. That's, okay, we're going to go 10 months without raids. I can handle that. 10 months without raids? Cool. That's content that I like, but it's going to come back. They said it's going to come back in December. I'm down for that. But three years is too long. People really liked Dark Sectors too, and now it's been so long that people forgot what Dark Sectors are. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen to raids. I think it's absolutely possible though. And that's going to do it for this even more Dev Workshop breakdown, I suppose. The links to the relevant pages that DE has posted are in the description, so you can read through those if you want. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow when this update hits i will be streaming and you will join me